Isn't it great how fast the propeller spins even though I turn the handle slowly? Yes, it's a gearbox and you probably think that there are some kind of gears or something like that inside. But this gearbox is a little bit different and it's actually not a mechanical gearbox. This is a magnetic gearbox. Although both mechanical and magnetic gears actually serve the same purpose, magnetic gears work on a completely different principle. A mechanical gear mechanism inevitably requires physical contact during engagement. Magnetic gears however use the interactions of permanent magnets, so there is absolutely no physical contact between the gears as in mechanical ones. If there is no physical contact, there is no wear or mechanical damage, and so no need for lubrication. Isn't it great? This flux modulated concentric magnetic gearbox basically consists of three concentric rotors. I designed all these in Fusion 360, then 3D printed them with PLA. This is the sun gear. There are 8 magnets on the sun gear, and normally these 8 magnets are 4 pole pairs, so 4 mechanical teeth. But this sun gear is a little different because I didn't arrange these magnets alternately like one north and one south as in this ring here. The magnets in the sun gear are arranged in groups of two, two north and two south, so that in total there are two pole pairs. And that means two teeth instead of four teeth. The reason I arrange it this way is to get more gear ratio in the same value. The other component is the ring gear. There are 20 magnets in the ring gear and this time, unlike the sun gear, I arranged these magnets as one north and one south alternately. As you can see on this magnetic field viewer, the magnets in the sun gear are in groups of two. But here each magnet is separate. In this case, 20 magnets make 10 pole pairs and this means 10 mechanical teeth. The last component is the flux modulator. What does this modulator do? It's just like the planetary gears in mechanical ones, it converts the magnetic flux in the ring gear into a magnetic flux that can match the sun gear. And finally, when the sun gear is added, this inner modulated ring gear flux and the sun gear can work together and the gear ratio can be achieved. So actually all the work is done by the modulator. If there was no modulator anyway, the sun and ring gear would rotate together at the same speed and direction like a magnetic coupling. The modulator owes this flux modulation work to its 12 metal segments on it. There have to be exactly 12 set screws, otherwise the flux of the ring gear cannot be converted into a flux compatible with the sun gear. It's converted into a flux of different order and so the gearbox will not work properly. So there has to be exactly 12 metal segments and this value comes from the thing that there are 2 pole pairs in the sun gear and 10 pole pairs in the ring gear. So 12 pole pairs, 12 teeth in total. Okay. Okay, this is a second order radial flux concentric magnetic gearbox. It's radial flux because the fluxes of these magnets are moving in a radial direction towards the center. That's why it's called radial flux. Okay, let's give it a spin. I'd better fix it. So, okay, when, <laughs> when I turn this much later, the sign gear will rotate. Here we have the sun gear, this can be rotated with the orange handle here, the inner modulator with the grey and finally the other ring gear with the blue handle. The gear ratio depends on which gear is stationary and which gear is moving. Before we start, remember that the gear ratio is output divided by input. So the output teeth speed or torque divided by input teeth speed or torque. When the modulator is stationary, turning the sun gear causes blue ring gear to spin as you can see. So for the ring gear to make one turn, 
The sign gear has to make 5 turns. This means a gear ratio of 5 times and in this case we get 5 times more torque than the input, the sign gear. But in return, of course the speed will slow down 5 times. And check out the gears are rotating in the opposite direction. This time something more interesting, I'll keep the ring gear fixed, not the modulator, the input will be the sign gear and the output will be the modulator. What will happen now? The gear ratio was output divided by input. So the modulator has 12 metal segments and the sign gear has 2 teeth. In this case the gear ratio should be 6. And as you can see, when the propeller made 6 turns, the modulator made only 1 turn. And in this case the gears are rotating in the same direction. Now the sign gear is fixed. The ring gear is input and the modulator is output. The modulator didn't even complete one turn. These three cases we have seen so far were cases where torque increased and speed decreased. Now let's see the opposite. Whoa! It's really fast. Although I can't count it now, there is 6 times a gear ratio between the sign gear and the modulator. And because I'm now turning from the modulator side, the speed increases 6 times, but the torque also decreases 6 times. As a result, a total of 6 different gear ratios can be created. 3 of where the speed increases and the torque decreases, and 3 of which will be the case where the speed decreases and the torque increases. This is just like in mechanical planetary gear sets. There is no need to mention the last two combinations where the speed increases, only the ratios are different. This motor can go up to a maximum of 3000 rpm and with the 6 gear ratio magnetic gearbox in front of it, it can theoretically go up to a maximum of 18000 rpm. And I really wonder what happens at such high speeds with these 3D printed parts. To be honest, it's not what I expected. There's a little bit of wobble and look at the particles flying in the air. Although the design looks easy, it can be challenging to get precise tolerances with 3D printers. And if there's also wobble on the mechanism, we may face these kinds of results. Also, the bearing noises are terrible. There is a loss of about 6000 revolutions, which is too much for a magnetic transmission. Oh.